Look, it's part of my job to show you that anything in the kitchen is possible. And boba tea? Oh, it's very possible. Okay, so today we're making boba tea. And no, I don't just mean the flavor and then we're gonna go get tapioca pearls. No, 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 no. We are making our own tapioca boba, okay? We're making them ourselves from scratch. It's very, very easy. And honestly, I'm surprised that more people don't do it because you have complete creative control. I always get these questions like, Josh, why should I even make it? Like, why? It's so much time and like, it's difficult. Is there even a point? Uh, well, first off, it's really not that hard. Second off, you're being a little babby. You can make any flavor exactly how you want. The idea of being able to control the flavor however you want is the power. That's all the power. And I'd like to give you that power. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Let's cut straight to the chase. Oh, Josh, but boba pearls have to be hard. I mean, look at them. They're just little men. Actually, no. They're super easy to make and they only require a grand total of four ingredients. First step, we're gonna make the pearls. In a small sauce pot, add a third cup or 78 milliliters of water, a third cup or 65 grams of packed brown sugar. I highly recommend going by grams here, by the way. You just gotta trust Papa's intuition. Now heat that liquid to boiling, then reduce the heat to low, add half your tapioca starch, and quickly mix it in for about six to eight seconds, then turn off the heat and mix in the remaining half of your tapioca starch. Mix until thoroughly combined and it begins to form a dough, then dump it out onto a work surface and knead it together until you get a beautifully smooth dough. Just a minute or so. Now as this dough cools, it will firm up, so you gotta move quickly. Now divide your dough into four equal pieces, roll each piece into a super long rod. That's about half an inch thick. Cut that log into small cubes like you see here and repeat with the rest. Then just roll these cubes in a nice little balls. Because the dough's probably gonna start to firm up and cool down here, it's always nice to have a helper to speed things up. If your dough firms up, you can give it a quick three second reheat in the microwave to make it pliable again. Now once you have a beautiful ocean of balls, toss those in a bowl with more tapioca starch to coat, toss them around, then place them in a fine mesh sieve and shake off the excess to get tons of lightly starch coated boba pearls. At this point, they'll cool and firm up quite a bit. You can store these in an airtight container and freeze them pretty much indefinitely if you don't wanna use them right away. But we're using them right away, so to cook your boba, simply heat a medium pot of water over medium high heat until boiling, then add your pearls to the water and boil for 30 minutes. Then cut the heat and let them rest in the hot water for another 20 to 25 minutes or until translucent and chewy. Now while those are cooking, let's make our brown sugar syrup. To a small sauce pot, add one and a quarter cup or 250 grams of light brown sugar and six and a half tablespoons or 100 milliliters of water. Gently swirl that around to hydrate all the sugar with water. Now just heat that over medium heat until it's dissolved and begins to bubble. Then increase your heat to medium high and it'll start to boil pretty vigorously. So as soon as as it's reduced and you start to see large bubbles, check it by pouring it onto a plate and if it's nice and syrupy, cut the heat and that's your brown sugar syrup. Now, drain your boba pearls in a fine mesh sieve, then stir them into your sugar syrup along with one tablespoon or 19 grams of blackstrap molasses. And those right there look like some sort of nightmare infinity pool, but it's actually a beautiful brown sugar. Boba. Now, as usual, those balls will shrink a little as they cool and they'll become fully transparent as well. Okay, the hardest part is over. Next up is the fun moment of choosing your tea. We have two versions, a traditional brown sugar milk tea and a matcha milk tea. For the traditional, you can really use any of your favorite black tea. Here we have three different kinds, but I'm gonna go with Earl Grey because it's yummy. To a small saucepan, add two cups of whole milk or nut milk. Yes, haha, -ha, nut milk, so funny. Now heat that over medium heat, stirring occasionally till it hits around 162 Fahrenheit, then immediately remove it from the heat and mix in two tablespoons of loose leaf black tea. Let that steep for four to eight minutes or until it reaches your desired strength of flavor and strain the tea through a fine mesh strainer to give yourself an infused milk tea. Now be sure to cool that bad boy down either in the fridge or over an ice bath before using. Oh, by the way, you can also make a large batch of this, keep it in the fridge for when you want it. Just pop up. Now to assemble our traditional milk tea, simply spoon in as much or as little boba as you like into the bottom of a nice tall glass. Hit it with a spoonful of some of the syrup or to your taste, then add some nice ice cubes, always nice ice cubes. Then pour in your chilled milk tea, add in a reusable stainless steel boba straw for the earth friendly flex. But before we taste and get these balls in our mouth, let's quickly make a matcha version, which is even easier. Snag yourself two and a half teaspoons or six grams of matcha powder, and to that you're gonna whisk in about two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of hot 
water. It should make a liquidy paste the consistency of heavy cream, but if not, you can always add a touch more water. Now you have your matcha concentrate. Just get another long boy glass, drop in your brown sugar boba along with some of its brown sugar syrup, your ice cubes, then top it with whole milk or, yes, your nut milk. Be sure to leave a little bit of room for your matcha concentrate, and as you might expect, pour your matcha right on top. Centrally, insert your boba straw, give it a nice stir, and well, with nothing left to do here, I think it's time that we firmly grasp it and get to sucking. Woo! The tail of two teeth. So we have a matcha, and we have a regular, or brown sugar, if I should say. That tastes exactly like boba tea. I mean, this, this is great. The milk is nice. You can really taste the Earl Grey coming through. Obviously, you can use other teas. And then the brown sugar flavor comes through. The boba is sweet. It's chewy, voluptuous. I want to mention one thing. You ever gone to a bubble tea shop? You bite into the boba, and it's good, but it's just, like, crusty on the inside. These, these are tendy wendy. Now, the matcha version is the same thing, but we added sort of, like, a matcha paste to just regular milk. And I still added the brown sugar syrup because I wanted to see what it was going to be like. So, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yo, this is the best one easily. I've actually never had a matcha boba. This is absolutely Bossy. The moral of the story is, if you want to go to a boba tea shop, that's fine. But if you've ever made it yourself, you have complete and total control. And uh, it's made with like actual ingredients. It's kind of a superior option. You want to know what else is full of milky balls that you suck straight into your mouth for chewy goodness? B-roll. <laughs> guys and that is it so we made our boba tea and you know what i was right shocking making it yourself really is honestly so so much better there are a lot of boba shops out there that are very very good so i don't want to take a poopy on any of them at all absolutely go support your local boba places but you gotta try making it yourself because the amount of flavor that you can put into it and doing it from completely whole ingredients instead of just powders is a big w but more specifically the green tea boba with the brown sugar pearls it is the most beautiful combination i've ever had in a boba so with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.